Hello, this is the TradeSite U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview and Domestic Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Monday the 11th of April 2016 and ending Friday, April 15th, Tax Day in the U.S. along with options expiration. We'll get into all that later. By the way, Tax Day is often a pivotal point in the markets, a turning point in the markets. So the fact that we've been up the last month or month and a half or so uh, means we could get a rollover coming Tax Day. A lot of times... You know, either people are funding their IRAs leading up to tax day or they're pulling money out to pay their taxes. And uh, and then it sort of reverses the market after that. So we'll see what happens. Here's the ES from a futures contract daily chart. This is the uh, proper technical way to look at the markets. Uh, back up to where we were, you know, before the August crash, before the January quote-unquote crash, the pullback. Um, you know, double bottom back there in January, February, and there's one also in August, September, and October. And both of them bounced. Um, let's look at the weekly just to kind of put this in perspective. Okay. Um, you know, we came down. This is what's so amazing. The red line. So if you take the red line, this is a uh, the last nine bar up startup phase that we got was back in early 2014, basically April and May. So the red line is the static trend line that's still in place from that last nine bar move up. We rolled over, so we touched it in October of 2014 almost. In August of last year when we pulled, rolled over, we came down near it and bounced. This time in January and February, we bounced off of it almost exactly twice. The double bottom is right off that level. So that's been the support level for the market. Now we are eight bars up on the weekly chart towards a new startup phase. So that will finally erase if we get it next week, that nine bar from back in 2014. But we'll have a new static trend line. It will be the same one we already have because it's still going to have that same low. Uh, and then on the flip side, we had the move down in October and November gave us a nine bar on the weekly again, nine bar startup to the downside. That creates the green static trend line above, and that's sort of your target for the current move. Let's also take a look at the monthly chart just to give you a broader term look at the last, this goes back to 2000 or so on the S&P. What's interesting here, and we talked about this a lot last year, remember the markets were so flat in 2015. For the most of the after January, like the next seven or eight months until the August rollover, but we had a 13 sell signal in place from the end of late 2014, and the pink risk line of that is still there. It's not been broken, so it's still in play. And every time we come up, we hit it. We can't get through, and uh, so that's the wall of the upside. And that signal can still actually turn into quite a bit to the downside. So just because it's taken this long, we've had two fake pullbacks. You know, if you look at this signal here, there's still an opportunity for us to head all the way down to that red static trend line below at 1350 or so. So just be aware of that. That's, uh, that's an interesting chart overall. Uh, but we look at the daily, basically just sitting, not doing much. Uh, all right, so let's go through some of the key stuff from Friday. Uh, crude oil gapped up, and it was up uh, $2.47 to $39.72. Gold up $5.70, not a big deal. Uh, S&P gained 5 for the session. Again, here's the daily chart bumping against that green static trend line. Also, almost a new 13 cell signal. We haven't had one on the daily for a while. NDX was down less than a point. Very flat session on Friday. Very light volume, as you'll see in a minute. S &P, or the SOX was up but almost four points. Nothing, that's nothing. Biotechs were down 30, uh, 30 or so. The VIX was down 80 cents. Still operating off of that 13 buy signal. Trend was up a buck. Uh, close to a buck of one. That keeps the moving average just above that, the 10-day that we look at. NASDAQ volume, 1.48 billion shares, or 1.46, sorry. One of the worst of the year, again, uh, not including that, that, there was that bank holiday a couple weeks ago. Um, this is really one of the worst of the year, uh, which was disappointing to see. Advanced decline ratio on the NASDAQ was plus 395. Advanced declines on the S on the broad market on the New York was plus 7, uh, 1582, even though the market didn't go anywhere. That's interesting. Google down 65 cents. Look how flat it's been for the last week. Apple up 12 cents. It's not even a measurable number on Apple. Uh, Amazon up 317. Let's see, did that get us? Not quite yet, but Amazon could have a 13 sell signal uh, here any day with any tick up. And just keep in mind, the last one was back in the middle of December, and look at the move that that led to. <coughs> Excuse me. Netflix down 64 cents. All right, let's look at the intra, uh, intraday action from the week. Here's 10-minute candles on the ES. So Monday, flat opening and drifted lower. Tuesday, gap down, flat session. Wednesday was a good trading day for us. We were like 7 for 7 on Wednesday for stocks uh, and made some money in the futures. Uh, I think every day this week we made money in the futures. Uh, flat opening and rallied, uh, filled the gap from Tuesday in that move. Then gapped down again Thursday and headed lower. Gapped up Friday, but we did not fill the gap 
from the other prior day and then came back down and filled this gap. So we still have the gap at Wednesday's close that has not filled up around 2060 or so. And here's a look at the uh, NASDAQ side. Um, same thing, the gap is up top for Wednesday. Everything else filled. Overall, it was a pretty narrow week uh, and the volume was, was poor. All right, let's take a look at the uh, economic data coming out this week. Monday, no data. Tuesday, import export tri prices, treasury budget at 2 in the afternoon. Wednesday, MBA mortgage index, PPI, retail sales, uh, business inventories, crude oil inventories in the, in the afternoon, the Fed beige book. Uh, Thursday, we've got the CPI data. Oops. Let's try this. Thursday, we've got the CPI data. Uh, we can do this. Hang on. Thursday, we've got the CPI data. There it is. Uh, which is a big number, obviously, and initial and continuing jobless claims. Uh, 1030, we've got Natty Gas. Friday, Empire Manufacturing, Capacity Utilization, Industrial Production, and Michigan Sentiment. So the CPI is the big one. Um, but, you know, other than that, there's still quite a bit of data, just nothing on Monday. Uh, it's also options expiration week. That's the thing to focus on. So, And we're also starting earnings, by the way. Earnings for this uh, first quarter start to hit. So we've got earnings season, for those of you who are aware of what that means for us. A little bit different environment, usually, when we get in the core eight days of earnings. Uh, so Friday's options expiration in the middle of earnings should be pretty dead. Uh, if there's an options unraveling move, it would usually happen Wednesday, maybe Thursday. That should be the bigger trading day of the week. Monday might be light because there's no data to start us out. And everybody's waiting for earnings. So I'm guessing uh, Friday really light, Monday light, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The better trading day is probably Wednesday and Thursday in particular if there's an opportunity. Once those earnings start to roll out, plus the options unravel, be looking for that move. So that's how we'll go at the week. Really important to know what you're going at, right? Don't just show up every day and treat them equally. Successful traders never do that. You have to know what's ahead. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal12. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. Have a great trading week.